service home buyers and home sellers throughout Boston, the South Shore, the South Coast, and Cape Cod. Our firm takes pride in assisting our clients in the next chapter of their lives by taking a holistic approach to their real estate endeavors. We believe that every move should be a moving experience. Every week, my co-host Melissa Wallace and I will provide you with my team's unique marketing approach to selling homes and share with you our expertise in navigating the home buying process. We value the experience of our agents at Boston Connect Real Estate so much that not only will you hear my perspective on real estate topics, occasionally you will hear the expert thoughts and opinions of our experienced agents at Boston Connect Real Estate. Be a part of our roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you'd like to listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one consultation with me and my team to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with me at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now, sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And good morning to all my South Shore neighbors. This is Sharon McMire. You are, of course, listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable here on a finally somewhat sunny, well, not raining morning in uh, Massachusetts. Here we are. I am in studio this morning with uh, my sidekick, uh, Melissa Wallace. Good morning. How good are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. So uh, we also have uh, my favorite producer. Uh, don't let Larry know that because he's been on on Tuesdays. So my favorite Saturday producer, let's put it that way. Okay. Then I'm, it's like, I, I feel like, um, you know, saying what I used to say to my kids, I used to say, you're my favorite six-year-old. You're my favorite <laughs> five-year-old. <laughs> so Tim McKinney, you are my favorite Saturday. Oh, um, thank you, Sharon. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And talk real estate nation. Yes. Yes. So, uh, Hey, I sent you a picture of hardly, uh, yeah, I know. you got to stop teasing me like this. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not, I can't just walk over to the studio and grab one out of the box, you know? (laughs) I know. I wish I had time to to, to bring you over some. That's okay. I I shouldn't be eating donuts anyways. I I got a healthy little breakfast here, so. Oh, good for you. Yeah, Yeah. I shouldn't be eating donuts either, but you know what? But but just a little indulgent indulgence now and then is okay. Yeah. Mel, you want to tell everybody about Hardly Saints? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, oh, go sorry. ahead. You go ahead. No, no, no. You know, I want want you to talk about it. I want you to talk about it. Go ahead. You talk about it. So, uh. Well, I don't know a whole lot about them, but I do know that you have to pre-order your donuts because they sell out very quickly. Uh, check out the website. They go around each week into different locations with their truck, and you can get donuts right off the truck. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a veteran. He, It's his business. This yeah. is supporting him. Him and so his wife. If, yep. Yeah, him and his wife. And uh, hey, who doesn't like donuts? And, and you're helping a great cause. Yeah. yeah. And you can actually go there and get the, um, I, I got a, a half dozen donuts this morning. So you can um, get the donuts just right at the truck. You can um, pre-order dozen donuts um, there. So, um, but if you're watching us live on Facebook, you can see how, yeah. I'm like, how live like on perfect Facebook. these yeah. donuts live are. Live on Facebook. It's going to be hard for us to not eat them. In enough. YouTube. Yeah. So if you're on Facebook or YouTube and uh, you can see them on there. But if you do want to follow us uh, on YouTube, you can go to the Boston Connect channel. It's Boston Connect TV. And um, you can also find us on YouTube, I mean, Facebook on Boston Connect Real Estate and on my personal page this morning, Sharon Costa McNamara. And I put that uh, Costa in there because, you know, that's my maiden name. And I want, you know, my friends from Dorchester to remember me because uh, that's what we're going to be doing on Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. Tuesday, am I going to be here? Yeah, you? Kristen Howlett actually is uh, uh, watching us on Facebook. So hello, oh, Kristen. Hi, She's Kristen. a full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate. And she um, every month I do a little segment with her. We're going around um, south of Boston and highlighting a community. Um, but I cannot do the show on Tuesday. So Sharon um, is joining Kristen for our monthly show. Um, and they're going to be talking about Dorchester. So. Yeah, I'm super excited about that. So um, Dorchester. It's, Dorchester. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just jump in one more on the, speaking, HarleySaints.com. Yes. I just went to the About Us page and scrolled down in the picture. The truck he has. It's, oh, it's so cute. Is amazing. Yeah, yeah it's, so, it's so cute. Is it an antique? Do you know? or? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I think it was converted. Is Emmy out there right now? Emmy. Is Emmy so know? cool. Yeah. I love it. The, the, I mean, the donut truck, is it, um, is it an antique or is it converted? <laughs> 
imported imported. from Argentina. It makes me like it even more. I know. Oh, that's great. Oh, Mm. I love it. I love the color and the the white wheels. And yeah, can we play some Argentina music? I'd like to (laughs) Uh, see if I can find some. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, let's find some. Um, But um, yeah, so so we have the donuts here. Sharon's doing the show with Kristen on Tuesday. Um, we just did uh, quite a few shows on, um, something that's really important and going on in our industry. Um, and we're sort of moving on without really moving on to a new topic. Um, it's really just, um, you know, I guess today we're going to be talking about knowing the benefits of paying a buyer's agent. Um, we're going to do the seller's perspective, buyer's perspective. Um, so it's sort of, you know, continuing, but not really. It's sort of a new, new topic, um, continuation. Um, but yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. All right. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. So, um, I also have my friends on clubhouse that are joining us. So for those of you that are familiar, Oh, there we go. Oh, here we go. Now let's just listen to this for a moment. I wish I had like a flowy dress on it. I yeah. could be like, I, yes, and some, some like candles, a glass yeah, of wine, some yes. like black Hello, shoes, darling. like with a buckle on them. You know you're what I mean? Just like, like your man's in the corner. You're just like waiting. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Like, you know, and he has a rose. <laughs> in his, in, in between the teeth, right? Yes, between yes. the teeth. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, Tim's going to get me in trouble. Tim, we have people that complain about my show. Do you, do you oh, even, I know. Do you I know. Yeah, we got to stay that? on topic. I yeah. Know, yeah. Why do people complain about my show? I don't, they, I don't they get like, it. They like things a certain way. Yeah. You know, people don't like change. And, you know, <laughs> like, get your show's about real estate. Talk about real estate. They do it most of the time. But you listen know, to this song. Yeah, I mean, how sexy is, is that? Let's go to Argentina. Yeah, okay. Right. I have to okay. get a passport. First. I have to get a passport. Yeah, you should have a passport always. Yeah. So, all right. Well, there's Argentina. Maybe I'll go and check out real estate there and then bring it all together. So, um, again, that is Hardly Saints. The reason why we're playing Argentinian music is because that's where their truck is from. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come and get a donut. Yeah. So, if you are in the area, we're at 19 Matakesic Street uh, in Pembroke Center, right across the street from Stop and Shop. And um, they're out there. And we have Emmy Flaherty in the office this morning as well. Emmy is a full time real estate agent here at Boston Connect Real Estate. She is one of the best of the best. Uh, and if you want to see what the studio looks like and how we're doing our show, uh, come on by. She will tour you through, but you have to act like it's a museum and you have to be really quiet. Yeah, really quiet. Really quiet. Wear quiet shoes. Yeah. <laughs> it just reminds me of that, That you know, shh, be, what was that cartoon? Was it a cartoon? Shh, be very, very quiet. Oh, I mean, I'd want to catch the rabbit. Oh. I'm hunting rabbits. Uh-huh. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Jenny Wendell, who is also a full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate, said on Facebook, start your weekend off right. Donuts are the secret energy boost for all home hunters. Oh, there you go, Ginny Wondell. She's just so full of wisdom. Bringing it all back to real estate. I love Ginny. Um, I, she was the first one to send me a text on my birthday a couple weeks ago, and she sends me all these things of wisdom. Ginny, I know you're listening right now. I could use some of those little prayer things you used to send me every day. But and I was starting to say, I have my friends on Clubhouse. They are joining. They can hear us. For some reason or another, they cannot hear Tim. Uh, but we don't have time to figure out why. Uh, Tim, are you in the other studio again? Are you in the the, the main? Yeah, one? but I I've got all my stuff, yeah. hmm. all the right buttons pushed to talk to everything. Yeah. So I don't know. All right, might be me. Who knows? Mm. So, um, anyways, I have my friends. They are uh, real estate agents throughout the country, and I think it's just such a nice, you know, added val to bring to all of our listeners here on WATD uh, because it's really nice. Uh, one of the things that I think is really important as a real estate agent and, of course, the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate is to really be um, on top of topics that are happening not only in our hyper local area, but throughout the nation. Because generally speaking, if something happens one place, it will happen here as well. Um, And it's nice to sort of be ahead of the curve. Uh, So I do have a lot of people throughout the country that are joining us live as well. Uh, Periodically, they will uh, pipe in on our conversation. I will introduce you to them. So if you are thinking about uh, relocating to another area, uh, then I have the right person for you. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Let's get into it. Knowing the benefits of paying a buyer's agent. Um, Do we want to do seller's perspective first or do we want to do a buyer perspective first? Um, Let's, what do you want to do? 
Mm, I don't know. I don't either. Um, so let's let. What do we do? Uh, maximizing buyer interest and in offers. So from a, a seller's perspective. Okay. Um, the other thing too is I do want to give the number to the studio. Tim is live in studio as well. Seven eight one eight three seven four nine zero zero. Seven eight one eight three seven four nine zero zero. You can call in and talk to us, or you can text in if you have a message or potentially a complaint. <laughs> 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 potentially a complaint. Potentially a complaint. If you don't like the Argentina music, you have to blame Tim for that. I don't I don't control the dial on that. So um yeah, so back to you know why we're talking about this. The past three weeks we've been talking about the NAR settlement. And the NAR settlement, um, I'm not gonna get very much into that, mm -hmm. but I will say um it, it, I watched something again. I watched two hours of an antitrust um, class last week. She was great. Jody O'Brien uh, was the instructor. And uh, it was really, really, really good. And she also said, and I've said this since the beginning, because again, we were the first office in Massachusetts to have the MAR, Massachusetts, of, uh, Massachusetts Association of Realtors uh, Council and head of education teaching our office what this all means. So we are taking it very, very seriously. And um, she, I've been saying it since then, four weeks ago, and she reiterated that NAR has said that regardless of what this settlement is, and how it pans out, they are going forward with the conditions of the settlement as it stands now. <clears throat> what does that mean for you if you're a home buyer or a home seller? Well, this is what it means. <laughs> I, feel <like> I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm interviewing myself. Yeah, well, you can talk about this until... I know. What's this? What's the saying? Until the cows come home. Or until, I was gonna say until the sun rises because that's what it feels like oh. here. <laughs> sun until the well, sun. We had rises. so much fun with the eclipse. Oh yeah, we did. We sat out front. Yeah. <laughs> Why are we even gonna talk about real estate today? I don't know. We I just feel shouldn't. better though. I feel like somebody popped a bubble as soon as that eclipse was over. I feel like my energy is. I can walk a straight line again. So, um, so what this means? What those not? What the the two main conditions and what it means for buyers and sellers is one. No longer will MLS be allowed to put in a compensation for a buyer's agent, okay? I'm not going to get into the weeds about that because if you want to know more about it, you can listen to our podcast, Talk Real Estate Roundtable. You can also go to talkrealestateroundtable.com and you can find all of those shows and it will explain it in detail. And so what it means is... Um, no longer will we be able to see that. <clears throat> the other thing is MLS PIN is really not part of this because it's not association owned, but they will follow suit. So we're just going forward, pretending that this is what's going to happen, okay? Mm -hmm. Because we know that NAR is going to make these adjustments anyway. So we are part of the National Association of Realtors. So we'll have to abide by that. If we choose to leave in January, then that will be our choice, okay? Um, so what that means is, there's no compensation the way that it used to be, as I explained, and the way that it is right now, actually, currently, it is still this way until July or until further notice from NAR, which is such a gray area, but I won't start complaining about that right now. Right now, the way that it works is you list your home, you pay your seller's agent, okay? The seller's agent only represents you and has fiduciary responsibility to you. So you pay me a certain amount to list your home. You give me that money in our contract. I just because I'm nice, I tell you what I'm going to be doing with my money. I particularly don't think it's anyone's business, yeah. but hey, the state tells me I have to do it. I conform to what the state wants me to do. And I put in my agreement, hey, you're paying me this. And I'm just letting you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm going to pay half to a buyer's agent. And I love the way that Trish Flynn, full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate, the way that she put it at our roundtable that we have every Tuesday is... I value a buyer's agent so much that I'm willing to give half of my compensation away to them. Mm -hmm. And that's how we did it. We did it through MLS. So that was our participating contract with MLS is, hey, in order for you to put your listing into MLS where it will be syndicated to all of the other websites like Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, all the other, BostonConnect.com, all the websites you have to offer compensation. Mm -hmm. So really the, the charge was to me as the listing agent. 
So I would give half of it away, okay? That's going away. No longer will we do that and no longer do they want that. I have some funny stories about it, but we don't have time in a <laughs> bottle of wine in front of me because honestly, when I read it, when I read the damn settlement, it says, oh, but a seller's agent can still compensate a buyer's agent. Uh, that's what we do. But yeah, hey, so listen, if you want to make it all crazy and, and get me into your crazy little world, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> We should have had mimosas. This would have been more fun. <laughs> well, we still have time. We you know where all time. the stuff is. I, yeah. I'm clearly talking anyways all by myself. You can go get the stuff from mimosas. Just don't tell Ed Perry, okay, Tim? Um, so with that said. I think it's a little late for that, Sharon. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, um, so with that, no longer will we be able to do that. So now if I am not paying a buyer's agent, if I'm not compensating them, then the theory is, is that I won't be charging the sellers as much money, right? Makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I was only making half of that anyways. So chances are that's what I'm going to charge the seller. The seller still has the opportunity and the right and the ability to compensate a buyer's agent. So I don't care what you're hearing on CNN. I don't care what you're reading in the New York Times. I am telling you that you can. Mm -hmm. I'm getting feisty. Well, uh, Tracy is offering to come in. She's a bartender. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, please come. Please come. Yeah. Tracy makes the best drinks too. So Tracy Grady, full-time real estate agent here at Boston Connect Real Estate as well. She is part of the Grady team and she's fabulous. And she was here a couple of weeks with us talking about this. And honestly, it, it it's just so much to yeah. sort of digest. So you as the listener, if you're only hearing us once a week, like we understand it's confusing. Live in our world. Yeah. Live in our world <laughs> every day. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so now the seller, yes, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you can still pay a buyer's agent. I want to make that very clear. No matter what you're hearing, it's not true. If you want to know what the truth is, if you, this is what I want everybody in the world who's listening right now. <laughs> in the world, I mean Marshfield. <laughs> <laughs> Here on the South Shore. <laughs> Here on the South Shore. Call me and I will explain it to you because honestly, I have been, I actually wasn't in the office this week. I worked from home just for a couple, a few days, just so I could like concentrate on some stuff. And one of them was reading through this NAR settlement. Call me and I am happy to explain it. And I know I said I was going to get on topic, but hey, it's my show. I can do whatever I like. My daughter, Mackenzie, yesterday, um, she works at a university and she was at an academic academic conference. It's about like higher education, like drug and alcohol initiatives, things like that. And she texted me. One of the speakers said, brought up for some reason or another, felt the need to bring up real estate in the middle, about, uh, middle of, you know, suicide prevention, you know, and said... Um, you know, real estate agents are the ones to blame for basically everything, for prices being high and for just being unaffordable. Mm. And Mackenzie, my bright 28-year-old, sent me like a text message saying, well, that's a different take, don't you think? So this is this woman's theory is real estate agents buy all the houses then we renovate them, then we flip them, and then we get paid to sell that house. But we're still getting paid the first time we sell it. So we're making money. We're the only ones making money through this process. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. Well, if it was that easy, I mean, yeah. why, why would we even have the show? Why would, mm. we, why would we be trying to you know, good grief, get clients and educate people on the real estate market. Well, the we part, were just going to do it ourselves. The part <laughs> that's worrisome about that, Mel, is she's out there telling a room full of people this, and there's one 28 year old in the room that knows the truth. So now all those people are got, they're out this morning, they're eating donuts somewhere down in Rhode Island, and they're saying, Hey, did you know that real estate agents, this is the reason why we are where we are? Please don't hate us. Love us. We we do a good job. We work really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And if you had an agent that didn't, then pick a different one. <laughs> <laughs> you just like are very matter of fact about this whole thing. <laughs> you just like if you didn't have a great experience, pick a different one. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Move on. Move but, on. <laughs> well, I was talking to my friends on Clubhouse this morning, and I was like, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. I just woke up pissy. So that's what happened. And um, I'm trying. Oh, 
They're I'm saying, trying. <laughs> they're saying that they lost us. Did you lose me, Meg? Can you still hear us? Mm. Hello, we can hear you. Oh, it's interesting. It's but you can't hear me through the through the mic. Okay, go ahead, Mel. Ask me a question. Um. Well, no, I want to. I, I want to get to sort of. Okay, we the past couple of weeks we've been talking about Denar settlement, what it means, and everything. So anybody who's been following along with all of our shows or on the podcast and is educated on that part of it. But you know, and I and I did do a show with Kristen, um, Kristen Howlett, about you know the role of a buyer's agent, sort of getting away from the NAR settlement um, and explaining all that part. But like the role in, and we literally have a list of ninety tasks as a buyer's agent, and I'm pretty sure we could come up with more than that. Um, and I think what we sort of got the point out of the past couple of weeks is like showing your value and showing what, what it is that you do for work. Um, but I, you know, today we're going to be talking about, you know, the value of a buyer's agent, um, you know, offering the compensation from home sellers. I think we should do from the seller's perspective first. Um, okay, sounds good. Okay. Well, I'm asking you a question. <laughs> what would, what would be sort of the, what would be the benefit of offering a buyer's agent compensation? All right. So, and again, I, and I, and we had this conversation with our agents the other day is you have to be very careful about what you're saying because I, I and right now I feel like I'm tiptoeing anyways. I feel like I'm tiptoeing on everything that is, you know, being said because I don't want to say the wrong thing. So I think that one of the benefits is that one, it take, if you have a buyer's agent working you know, on the other side, they are doing a lot of work. And I know that that's one of the big questions. Like, and we had a caller a couple of weeks ago, I think his name was Charles or something. Um, you know, what is the benefit of it? The buyer's agent does a lot of work. And as I stated in the beginning is we valued buyer's agent so much that we're willing to give away half of what the seller is actually paying us to a buyer's agent, mm -hmm. you know? So, well, that's one aspect. The other aspect is Sue Bollinger, now the full-time real estate agent here at Boston Connect Real Estate. She brought up a very valid point too is if I'm representing the seller, my fiduciary responsibility is to the seller. I have no fiduciary responsibility to the buyer. Well, that makes a lot of sense for the seller. But my worry and concern is, is if we have a lot of buyers out there that are unrepresented mm -hmm. because they can't afford to pay for their buyer's agent, mm -hmm. then where's the liability falling? Well, I was just going to say, I feel like it, it will, when you're not represented, so you're unrepresented in any part of the transaction, it brings on this, like, I think that there's going to be a lot more, um, like, uh, lawsuits. <laughs> yeah. Well, I sit on the grievance committee for, you know, my Massachusetts association of realtors, and I sense the same thing. And, and you know what I sense is I sense that there will be more lawsuits, potentially not grievances agent to agent, but maybe more so, you know, consumer, you know, the public mm -hmm. to real estate agents, because I don't think that they're going to be fully aware that of, they're not being represented. Exactly. That yeah. they're not being represented. So, um, you know what? Um, I have some stuff and I don't know where my bag is, but I, I printed out those disclosures that I made. If you want to grab those in the bag and I'll keep on talking. So one of the things is, so that one of the parts of it is the liability, like let the liability rest on the other agent, right? So that's going to take away that. And it's going to give you a good sense of, you know, relief that you don't have to worry about that, you know, at some point. So 93A lawsuits or things like that, right? So we don't want to worry about that. The other good reason is there are going to be a lot of agents who, I mean, a lot of buyers who simply just will not be able to afford a buyer's agent. They just won't be able to afford it. And I can't put it any other way than that. Um, and it's because, you know, if you think about the buyers, they're coming up with their down payment, they're coming up with their, um, you know, their closing costs, they're coming up with money for a home inspection, for a radon inspection, for a lead paint inspection, they're coming up with, um, mm -hmm. what other things? Oil adjustments at the end. Yeah. I still don't understand the oil adjustment. Can we talk about that for a quick sec? 
What, what about it? I this <laughs> you don't think a buyer should pay for it? the oil? Well, yeah, I this is how I feel. Again, I don't know why I'm so off track today, but I'm loving it. <laughs> um, you know, we do oil adjustments here, and so whatever oil is in the tank, the seller gets a final reading, and then at the closing, the buyer has to pay them for that oil in the tank. And I'm waiting for the day for a buyer to say, No, I don't want your oil, take it, <laughs> take it, take it. I'm not paying for it, I don't want it, I'll, I'll get my own oil. Yeah. Then what, what does the seller do with the oil? I don't know. That's up to an attorney, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to pay your attorney. Yeah, you have to pay your attorney. That's another one, right? Um, yeah. You have to pay for, um, well, sellers pay for the state tax stamps here in Massachusetts. But there's a lot of other things that have to be paid for. So this Plus is- Plus you're taking time off of work too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Absolutely, right? Mm -hmm. So here's been the conversations that we've been having around the office. If a client, if we have a buyer client that can't pay, does that mean that we don't show them houses anymore? Like, how do we do this, right? And then like, we're in this interim, we're sort of in purgatory right now. It's like some people are already putting these things into place and some people are not. And we're in this in-between state. And so if you're working with a buyer, and I just want to show you, and to those of you who are like, yeah, well, to, in, to the sellers who are saying, well, to hell with them, let them figure it out on their own. I feel like the it was already embedded in the sale price to begin with, but hey, and the question is, did you pay a buyer's agent when you bought your house, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is one of the things that I think, you know, the sellers are probably saying that, but for the buyers, it's real. Like they just won't be able to. So it's nothing has changed yet, but if sellers, are, I mean, if, if an agent is out with a buyer and they're showing... 10 houses, let's say. They mm -hmm. end up showing them 10 houses. And five of those houses, you know, the agent calls and they say, hey, um, you know, my seller is still willing to offer compensation. Okay, that's great. Now the buyer's agent knows they're going to get paid if they sell one of those houses. This mm -hmm. is the thing that's sort of funny to me because it's supposed to be about true transparency. Now, you have to show everybody any house that they want, whether there's compensation or not. Yeah, It will be up to the buyer though because if you sit down with the buyer the other part uh, the other caveat to this is the other thing is one it won't be an mls and two we will have to have a buyer agency agreement with every buyer that we are working with or showing houses to and in that it will indicate exactly what we're getting paid okay mm -hmm. this is what you will owe me if you purchase a house with me okay that number can't be adjusted I know it can't be adjusted um, upward because like if you want so much and they're offering more, you can't go upward. That money would go back to the buyer. Um, I'm sure it could go down, but <clears throat> that's another story. So why do I feel all over the place today? Did I take my meds? I don't know. <laughs> did, did you? <laughs> did I? Um, so with that said, now it's up to the buyer because the buyer is going to be the one that is responsible to pay. So if I'm sitting with my buyer, let's just play this, Mel. Hey, you know, here are the 10 houses that, oh, I'm just going to narrow this down. This, here are the five houses that we're going to go see today. I just want to let you know, you know, through our contract, you're going to owe me this, you know, this percentage of whatever, you know, house that you purchase. I want to let you know, I've already done some investigating and three of these sellers are willing to uh, compensate me mm -hmm. um, for my services to help you as a buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. These two are not. So I've already asked if they would, and they said one said that they clearly will not, that that's your responsibility. And one said that I would have to negotiate for it. And, and I'm very happy to do that. I'm very, you know, very, um, very confident in my ability to negotiate. So I'm, I'm happy to do that, but not at the risk of you losing the house. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to put you into a situation there where if we have to, if we have to negotiate for my compensation because you don't have the liquidity to do that, mm -hmm. I don't want to put your offer, you know, in, in a different position. But again, at the end of the day, it truly is up to you which way you want to go. So we can go see all five of these properties. I, I just want to make sure that you're aware of the situation before we go, because if you choose one of these two and they choose not to allow us to negotiate or they choose not to compensate me, we have to figure out how I will be paid. Yeah. I feel like this is going to be a fair housing 
like nightmare. Me too. Mm-hmm. Nightmare. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, <sighs> yeah. What we're supposed to do f- f- for one, what we do for all. Mm-hmm. But so, okay, we can educate them and and tell tell everybody, okay, this is these are the facts. But I feel like it's still going to be mm-hmm. a, a fair housing issue. Oh, I I absolutely you can't af- agree. you can't afford me, so I'm not working with you. Yeah, Megan, can you hear me? Okay, like through the studio or just on the phone. Okay. Okay, yeah, because we can't hear you. So there's something going on with my thing. We can't hear you through our headphones. Sorry about that, guys. So because one of the things we talk about all the time in Clubhouse is transparency. This is all this is. It's just about being transparent. And Anna is on there and she's known as the transparent agent, right? So it is about transparency. And that's what we always wanted. And believe me, (laughs) I said this Tuesday. If you have an agent that is only showing you properties based on what they're getting paid, knock, knock, time for a new agent. Okay. That's all I have to say. (laughs) Knock, knock. It is just time for a new agent. Nobody should be doing that. Yeah. So again, I felt as if it was a little more clear before, you know, like, hey, this is what, and for us in our MLS, it was written right in there. Like, right, you know, you could see it on Zillow and everything else. So now it's up to the buyer at that point when I'm sitting with the buyer and potentially the buyer could say, Sharon, you know, I really, I do like that house, but I mean, at the end of the day, I can't afford to pay you if, if it isn't going to be embedded in yeah. the, in the sale price, yeah. you know, if, if I can't, you know, if I'm, I'm going for a VA loan because I'm a vet, it, well, and you can't pay for anything really outside of the sale anyway. So let's not even use that as an example, but I just don't have the money to pay you. And Sharon, I do value your worth. I do value what you're going to do for me, but I just don't have the money. Yeah. I think I just have to take that house out of what I'm going to look at. As a buyer? As a buyer. Oh, I'm going to, I'm not going to look at it because I I, I can't look at it because I can't afford it. Do you think that that's going to happen as opposed to I'm going to look at it if I like it, then I'll figure it out afterwards? Or I think there'll be a little bit of both. But as a seller, are you going to take the risk? I don't know. As a seller, are you going to take a risk? I'm asking the world. Give the number. (laughs) WATD's number is 781-837-4900. Again, 781-837-4900 is the number to call or you can text as well. So Tim is uh, waiting patiently for anybody's input. Uh, We do have quite a few people watching us on Facebook and I think on um, YouTube as well. So um, yeah, I mean... Obviously, this is a very hot topic, um, and you know, it just we've been talking about it for a while, but I think we wanted to put a little bit of a spin on it, um, with this. But I, I think exposure, um, you have a question, yeah, I don't think we can take questions yeah, from there, take questions. I'm trying to figure out, um, to get this working. Hold on. but yeah, so, uh, I, 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 yeah, it's just gonna be, you know. It, it's a, it's going to be a lot, but mm-hmm. it is what it is. Yep. Sorry. I know. I was just trying to yeah. get that fixed. And uh, for you guys, if you can hear us, like we can't hear you through our headphones, so we can't hear, we can't manage that. So I'm sorry. If you want to send me a text for a question, I can read it that way. Um, yeah. So I think that that will be one of the benefits for a seller. I mean, here's the thing, the number that you were paying before, and again, I don't blame you for having these ideas in your head that suddenly, oh, it's going to be cheaper for me to sell my house. You know, it's funny because the sellers are thinking it's cheaper for me to buy a house. And for some reason or another, the buyers are thinking, I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know. If they think that the sale price of the houses are going to come down. I feel like they're going to go up. You know, here's another thing too. So uh, Trish and Nick Flynn, I mentioned this on Tuesday, Trish and Nick Flynn showed a house in, they showed a couple houses in Millis on Tuesday. One of them um, had $1 as representation, right? Because they have to right now have to put something in there. The value of a real estate agent clearly is more than $1. So the, they called, Nick called and asked, is your seller going to be willing to compensate a buyer's agent? And the agent's response was, you can negotiate for it. 
which is great. I mean, he's a really good negotiator. I bet you probably one of the best in the office considering he was, you know, is a Marine, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sure he can negotiate. And he's, it was interesting because they ended up going to this other house up the street and that other house had 30 offers on it. Mm -hmm. 30 offers. It went for $130,000 over asking. Now, Trish and Nick's offer didn't get accepted, but I'm so curious. I wish I knew how many offers the other house had. Yeah. Um, Kristen Howlett is watching, um, and she says, in my opinion, the number one benefit of working with a buyer's agent as a seller or a listing agent is that a good buyer's agent will have vetted the buyer. They will know their purchase ability. They will have talked through any potential scenarios so that the buyer is well informed. As a seller, wouldn't you rather work with a buyer who is well qualified buyer as opposed to a buyer who is not, not so serious? Yes. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. <clears throat> I mean, that is, I mean, and that's the thing where we're here, we're talking about the value of a buyer's agent. And, you know, it's so interesting because when the market is good, we always hear, you know, when you're a listing agent, well, what do you, I'm going to sell it on my own anyways. Like, what do you do? You just put a sign in the yard. And now it's like flipped. Like what, what does a buyer's agent do anyways? They open the door and let them show them the house. It's not as glamorous as HGTV. I'm letting you know that it just, is not that glamorous. Um, and it's not that easy. And there's a lot that's involved in it, especially if you have a good buyer's agent, you know, they're doing their due diligence and they're doing everything, you know, to make sure that they're protecting the buyer. But on the other hand, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, they're protecting you too. The liability won't fall back on you when we have all these people roaming around. Mm -hmm. Um, so one of the things too, is, um, when we're talking about sell, we're talking about sellers, right? Yeah. Okay. Sellers. What are other things that we want to talk about? Um, <clears throat> strategies that buyers <clears throat> agents use to market their properties too, because it's not just, so it, it, listing agents market their properties, but buyers agents market their buyers too. So, you know, how many times have we seen, oh, I have a buyer in search of, I have a buyer in search of, or I'm looking for X, Y, and Z in all these towns. And, um, you know, you get, you, how many times have you gotten a letter in the mail or a postcard in the mail? Hey, I have a buyer interested in, in living in your neighborhood and all this stuff. Like, it's not just, oh, let me just, you know, open the front door and, you know, you take a walk through. Like, there's so much more homework. There's so much more things behind the scenes that a buyer's agent does do. And for Kristen's point was, you know, they know that their buyer is well qualified because everybody, like, during a transaction, it's not one side against the other. It's everybody mm -hmm. coming together to to negotiate and make it all work so everybody makes it to the closing table. You know, I'm really glad that you said that because the best negotiation is not a battle. The best negotiation is just that. And when you're working with a buyer's agent, you know, on the other side, you know, again, I'm a very strong listing agent. So, you know, I sometimes I can tell like what the buyer's agent's going to be like if they want to battle it out. And, uh, sometimes that just isn't going to work, but, um, you know, we know the professionals out there know, like I'm not, I'm sort of the person that's given the answer. I'm the, I'm, I'm the voice for the seller, right? The seller mm -hmm. tells me. So it's really not a negotiation between a buyer's agent and a seller's agent. It's really a negotiation between the buyer and the seller. And it's our job as agents to sort of bring that together and sort of calm the emotions and bring the value in. So both parties are happy. And I do know that, you know, when, you know, a lot of people thinking, well, I'm just going to sell my house on my own, or I'm just going to, you know, I don't need a, a buyer's agent. Beware, do some research. I assure you that, you know, we are worth our weight in gold. And, you know, for a seller, you know, statistically, I think it's 40% more if you list your house with a real estate agent, because we are the ones that are negotiating. We have the right forms. We do all the things legally, like lead paint disclosures and all these other things. And for buyers, you're very much, you're more protected. And that's the other thing we negotiate for a price. So if you go and we're going to tell you if we think that you should be purchasing that house or not. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I showed a property the other day. Um, my client actually lives out of state and I FaceTimed her and, um, 
you know, showed her around the house and everything. And that's another story. You should see the disclosure he has added to there, the things he wants, but that's another story, another show. And um, as I was doing that, you know, I pulled comps on it and I just said, Hey, this is what they're listed at. And I actually found the comp that he's using to come to this number, but it was a year and a half ago. But do I feel as if the value is this? I said, honestly, I'm telling you that the value is probably at this list price. After that though, it's up to you. Yeah. That's emotional value after that. Exactly. The emotional value, I can't gauge that for you. So that's really where it is and how it gets to you. Um, I just want to give our number again, 781-837-4900. If you have any questions for us, uh, feel free uh, to give us a call. Any questions, comments, any of that good stuff, uh, give us a buzz. I was also just thinking about, so Sam Horton, who is a full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate, and he, he, how many um, how many investors he represents mm-hmm. and all the everything that he has to do up until putting mm-hmm. in an offer for an investor. Like, so they're relying on him to do a lot of research of what it is that they, especially if they're buying like a multifamily or something that they um, are going to rent out, what mm-hmm. it is, what's the market value of the rent right there? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so is it worth their investment as well? Mm-hmm. I mean, those are all things that that I know people rely on him for and mm-hmm. rely on other agents who represent, um, you know, a- investors and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Well, and I would say too, I mean, when an investor is coming at you as a seller and if they're not, you know, if they're unrepresented, yeah, there's a certain amount that they are familiar with and what they can do. But I'll tell you right there, I'm letting you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that investor has a lot more experience about buying and selling houses than you do. (laughs) If you haven't sold a house in 20 years and now you're going to sell your house and you're not going to offer compensation to a buyer's agent, I'm letting you know that that investor is going to know more than you do. Mm -hmm. And it's better, like, I still think it's still better to have that buyer's agent there. So uh, helping you. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> anything else from a seller's perspective? Um, let me just see here in South Carolina, the request. Okay. So somebody, uh, one of my friends here is asking me a question, um, on, cl- uh, clubhouse. Unfortunately, that's not working again here in South Carolina. The request for compensation will be questionable because a buyer's agent comes and requests who's to say the listing agent is saying a lower amount than what is on the agreement and they take the rest. Will attorneys be asking the listing agree- for listing agreements and buyer agreements? These are the questions our agents are asking. The transparency is gone and the shadiness is coming out. And I agree, Courtney. Yeah. There's, <laughs> this is making things worse, which is why I think you know, the judge still hasn't decided if they're going to accept this settlement. And now the DOJ is back out and they're going to reinvestigate the NAR, uh, NAR case. But doesn't matter. NAR itself, National Association of Realtors, said that they are going forward regardless with these conditions. And all of our forms are going to have to change. And I know here in Massachusetts, we don't have to show our listing agreements. Are we going to have to show the buyer's agreements? I don't know how it's all going to shake out. Or the agency out. disclosure? Yeah. Like who you're representing? I don't, well, the agency disclosure is something that we're always supposed to have. So again yeah but nobody right now nobody's asking for it yeah but know? the state can knock on our door and ask yeah. for every single one of them actually yeah. so <clears throat> um so yeah i don't know how that will work and um and again this is why i feel as if the buyers agents they it's important that they get paid in my opinion so let's just recap because we only have 10 minutes for the seller from your perspective i think it's great because the buyer agent there's where the liability will lie right? So you don't have to worry about that. They're going to be helping their person through that whole process. The other thing is, is if a, if a sell, if a buyer comes directly to the seller's agent and the seller's agent has to do all the work of two parties, that compensation, I don't know how much less it will actually be. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's one of the questions that's out there as well. Is that going to happen? Um, and then Will the, will more people come to your house if, you know, to see it because you are offering compensation to the buyer's agent? Now, I'm not saying that from an agent perspective, so I want to be very clear about that. I am not saying 
you should offer compensation because agents won't show your house. I am not saying that. Was that clear? Mm -hmm. What did I say? You, you, yeah. You were paying attention. I was paying attention. Okay. I'll say it one more time. Okay. (laughs) I am not saying that more agents, that agents won't show your house because you're not offering compensation. I am not saying that. Okay. What did I say? (laughs) You are not saying that agents will not show your house because you're not offering compensation. You're not saying that. I am not saying that. What I am saying is buyers may say to their agent, I can't see that house because they are not offering compensation and I can't afford to pay you if they are not. If I don't have a way to embed your fee into this purchase, I can't afford to buy that house, so I'm not going to see it. It's not that an agent is, like I said, in my little scenario, Mr. and Mrs. Hey, buyer, you're buying a house, Mel. Here are the five houses. Three, I've already said, they said that they would compensate me. So, hey, with our agreement, you are already covered. With these two, one said I had to negotiate. I am very confident in my negotiation abilities. But if there are multiple offers on that property, I never want my compensation to get in the way of you getting the house of your dreams. So that's a risk to the buyers, right? Mm -hmm. And this last one, well, he's just, he doesn't want to play the game at all. He's just, you know, he, he or she just doesn't want to give any compensation. And they're saying it is fully your responsibility to figure that out. Okay. The buyer may say, I can't, I can't take the risk. You know, you know, maybe I'll take the risk of you negotiating for your own. And if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. But you know what? The other three properties they're offering it, then I'd rather be one of those and maybe have a better opportunity at that. Yeah. I feel like it's a unfair, like it's a disadvantage to have that be a um, term in an offer. I just feel I like do too. It, I feel like it is. Mm-hmm. And again, it, yeah, I feel like if this is going to be a fair housing issue. Well, and we've had, you know, we've had lots of listings come on the market in our office this, you know, past couple of weeks and multiple offers. And, you know, right now we're not in that situation because we're still doing things the way that we've always done them until we're told otherwise. But there are some agents out there that are already starting to do it their way. Um, But you know, as we're looking at these offers, I know I was helping Michelle Fay, full-time real estate agent here at Boston Connect Real Estate. I was helping her go through her offers the other day. And, you know, we're just looking at line items. At the end of the day, the sellers care about their net. That's what they care about. So that's what they're looking at. So if I'm putting in my compensation on top of that, well, their net potentially would be lower. And again, this works in a multi-offer situation, but if it's just, if you're the only person, I feel confident if I'm going up against, you know, if I have to negotiate for my commission and I'm the only offer, I can easily reason with the seller that you're probably making more money based on the fact that you're listed on the market anyways with an agent, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that this price has always been sort of embedded in the number. So that's, that's that. (laughs) That's that. (laughs) The the end. (laughs) So we didn't even get to the buyer's sort of perspective of it, but for the buyer perspective, I mean, it's pretty quick. I mean, yeah, I just want the buyers to know I feel for you. I truly feel for you because like right now I'm going out with first time home buyers today. I'm going to be showing a couple condos to them and, you know, went through the pre-approval process and, you know, they, you know, connected them with Jasmine. They're going through that pre-approval process. And I had, um, a, consultation with them yesterday. He was at the airport, so I didn't do it in person, which we normally do. But I was talking about the process. Um, They were one of the people that were out there that they were just pushing the button. And then like somebody was showing up and showing them the house. And they're like, we, we don't even know how this works. Like we never get the same person. Like we never know, like nobody knows who we are. Nobody knows, like, we don't know who anybody is. Like they're just lost out there. That is the importance of having a buyer's agent, somebody that is working for you, solely for you, fiduciary responsibility to you. And they're, they're doing work for you when you are at work. That This is our job. So while you're at work at your full-time job, we're looking for houses. We're previewing houses. We're doing research on houses. Mm-hmm. 
that's that's why working with one buyer agent is more important. I did I sort of went into the conversation because his question to me, and I really wish that we had more time and I really wish that Clubhouse was working. And I do want to bring this up in a Clubhouse room soon. His question to me was, you know, Sharon, I've been online. I've been looking and I go, here it comes. And it wasn't what he had. He had, he didn't know anything about the NAR thing. Mm. His question was like, I'm just not sure if this is really the right time for me to really be buying. Should I wait? Like, it looks like interest rates might be going up again. It looks, you know, there's just, there's no inventory, multiple offers. Should we just rent for a little while and wait it out? What a great question. I mean, my answer now is, <laughs> my answer is different. I'm like, honestly, be, I know that we have some circumstances, but I'm going to help you through those. The journey will might be a little tougher, but I have a feeling it's going to be tougher after this. And this is why. Let me tell you about the NAR settlement and your responsibility after this in July is that you're going to have to pay the buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, yeah. So now we're adding more to it. So. Yeah. I think if you are a buyer, right now is the time to do it. They are saying that the rates are going to go up. So take advantage of what they are now. I'm telling you, they're never going to be 2.5 again. They're never going to be three, four, probably never five again. So you should be out there now before things go up. And you, on top of that, have to pay, pay a buyer's agent. Yeah. I, I just feel like my my answer was always, oh, whatever, it's the right time for you. <laughs> like yeah. very much a lawyer, like it depends. Yeah. Like it, mm -hmm. whenever the right time, it's like if you, <clears throat> I read recently that um, in 2023, so last year, first time home buyers were the biggest buyer pool and I was part of that buyer pool and I couldn't even imagine still being on my journey if I didn't have my house. So, you know, for everything that is changing, like I feel like m even my perspective would have changed from purchasing something mm -hmm. after July. Yeah, absolutely. So Anna, uh, my friend Anna, who um, she's on Clubhouse, and she says couldn't buyer couldn't buyers pay sellers transfer tax and other seller fees and finance that in exchange for buyer agent commission on the seller side. I, I suppose they could do anything they want so long as the loan will allow them to. Yeah, that right? would be a question for a loan officer. Yeah. If that's something that they are yeah. able to do. Will that be able to be done? But I think that that's a good idea. You know, the buyer now paying for things for the seller. I can't believe we're out of time. We have to make this show two uh, hours. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Melissa's like, no, I want to, I don't want to do that. We have a bunch of open houses going on this weekend. So if you get a chance, go to bostonconnect.com and you'll find all the open houses. Kate Fisher is at 45 Brookhill Lane from 10 to 12. Uh, she's also at 158 Bay State Circle from 1 to 3. The Grady team is at 6 Whitford Drive in Marshfield, 12 to 2. Sharon and Mary, 9 Longwood Lane, Hanover, 1 to 3. The Grady team, 10 to 11.30 at Ferry Street. Um, we're at Cushing Trail in Narragansett. And then again tomorrow. So go on to bostonconnect.com. Yeah. Woohoo. Yeah. So bye, everybody. Bye Thanks everybody. for watching Thank on you Facebook so and uh, Facebook Clubhouse friends. Thank you. Sorry for the difficulties. And uh, YouTube, thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Tim. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye. To live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of All this right. beautiful day. The South Shore's first choice for live team coverage of breaking news, emergency traffic, and severe weather. We have to get a button up here. I'll have Mark change that. Okay. Yeah. To my clubhouse friends, I am so sorry that this didn't work. I have no idea why. It's I think like we're still on Facebook too. Yeah, we are. We're on Facebook. We're still on YouTube. So, um, and for clubhouse friends, I'm just super sorry that I, you know, sometimes we come in here and gremlins come in in the middle of the night, and that's why some of our stuff is not working. I don't know why it was working perfectly the other day when I tested it. Um, but we'll get it working for sure for next Saturday. And I don't think any of you will be interested in Tuesday because I'm doing something on Dorchester, my hometown. But we are still live on Facebook and YouTube. And um, I just want to let every all of our watchers know, if you have any questions about this topic or if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, feel free to reach out to me and my team, uh, the McNamara Horton Group, um, or one of our dedicated agents here at Boston Connect Real Estate. You can get in touch with us um, at 7 8 
800-236-8000, or you can reach out to my cell phone and I can connect you to whomever you would like to speak to, 781-294-4848. Again, my cell phone direct number is 781-294-4848. And um, if you're confused about some of the things that you're hearing um, and how things are going to be, again, I will be extremely, extremely transparent with you on what is going on, what is true, what is false. Um, I don't have many concerns. I am not fearful about what is ahead of us. I just want to make sure that everybody is educated and understands what is going to be happening. So, um, you know, the ones with knowledge have the most, the most power, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. Awesome. Um, Clubhouse. Can you hear me? Cause I know it was terrible that it was only on the phone. We can hear you. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Like my little device here to get you guys on there. I don't know what happened. It might be because I used StreamYard today. I don't know if that had something to do with it. But did you guys have any questions for me? Insight? Very, very helpful for your buyers and sellers. Yeah. I think you gave a lot of clarity. I hope so. And don't you think like explaining it the way, because I know a lot of agents are saying the wrong thing right now, like they're saying, which is an antitrust violation is, you know, buyers agents aren't going to show your house if you're not, if you're not given compensation. Well, the truth is, no, that isn't. And again, if you have an agent that's doing that, then certainly you, you shouldn't be working with them, but it's up to the buyer and the buyers may say, I just can't afford it. So I'm not going to go look at it. Yeah, what we've been trained to say is, or think about saying is, why, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, why would you want to lessen your buyer pool? Yeah. Why would you purposely want to lessen your buyer pool? There mm -hmm. will be some buyers who will not come to your, see your property because they are, they want to work with their trusted, dedicated representative. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. All right, guys, I have a busy day with my accountant, so I have to go finish up some stuff and I will figure out why the hell this iRig thing isn't working. I'm sort of tired of it, aren't you? <laughs> Melissa's like, yeah, it's I can't just stand distracting it. Myself. It's distracting. It wouldn't be distracting if it was working. So, all right, guys, well, have a great day. If you guys do, you guys want to keep the room going and I can just, I have to go do my thing, but it's up to you guys if you want to. I'm going to pop off, but I want to say thank you to you, Sharon, and thank you to you, Melissa. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, have a good day. All right. So bye, everybody, on Facebook and YouTube. If you want to get in touch with us, 781-826-8000 or 781-294-4848. Uh, Mm -hmm. Do you like our like studio? Yeah. We get in the habit of talking to each other through it. Like newscasters. <laughs> <laughs>